Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our family chat room. I'm Coco. This is Alex, and I'm Zoe. Mommy, what are you doing with those numbers in your hand? Are you scoring something? Oh, that's right. Remember Auntie Maggie? She immigrated to Sweden from Taiwan a few years ago, and today she told me about what it's like to have never experienced a sterile social system and justice. She didn't understand there was a strong correlation between social justice and livable cities in the past. But after a few years living in Sweden, she just realized that social justice. Is the first priority for social progress. On the contrary, Taiwan's so-called liberal democracy is still a long way from the true righteous civilization. I see. So, what does this have to do with the pile of numbers and the cumuns? So, I have started researching the contents of the UN's World Habitat Condition Survey Day. As well as the connections between various factors, I also looked up the EIU's annual assessment of livability indicators. The total evaluation of the index encompasses economic, social, cultural, environmental, and medical factors. Oh, I know! I will care whether the living environment is polluted. Every saving. Energy saving green, close enough to the school, and of course safely hygiene and transportation facilities. Yes, these are key considerations. Besides this, have you heard the depression has become the second biggest threat after cardiovascular disease in the world? According to the WHO's 1948 definition of physical and mental health, health is defined not by materialistic healthcare or insurance, but by the social structure, family relationships, and society's ability to offer peace of mind. As a consequence, the overall planning of the community and the degree to which it functions properly. Have a high priority and substantial impact on the residents' physical and mental health. Now picture this: for an individual, health is the first and foremost as the number one. Other ones like wealth are many zeros in the back, and those zeros are impossible to pursue without health. And for the whole society. A sound system and implementation is the number one. Other derivatives are the many zeros. Whew! This analogy is quite clear and understandable. Therefore, we may get a sense of how a place seems to live by looking at these world habitat conditions, surveys, or indicator figures. I'm curious, Mom. May I also have a look? Sure. Well, Taiwan's livability index was ranked thirty-third in the world, and the democracy index is placed eighth, which looks good. This is the point that Auntie Maggie and I both found out. Taiwan can be proud of this rating, but she told me about what happened to her dad that made her feel disapproval instead. Her dad's company, which is based in Taiwan, was suddenly notified by the National Tax Bureau that it had to pay a tax bill of a considerable number, which had no legal basis. And his dad, the company's CEO, was, however, banned from leaving the country during the appeal period, before the legal proceedings were concluded. As a result. He was unable to handle with the overseas factory's emergency difficulties, resulting in massive losses. With the authorities freezing his account and auctioning off his property, only when finding out that there was many unreasonable, shady administrative practices that catch the public off guard and leave them no way to appeal, 
And what's even more unbelievable was the amount of the tax bill had been ordered again and again by the tax authority. Strange enough, isn't it? Following in the tax code shouldn't be negotiable. Later on, her dad was so distraught by the tax bill that he became physically and mentally ill, but still unable to resolve it. No, so Auntie Maggie will give up the social environment. A very low score. Hmm. Yeah. Although the numbers speak for themselves, the negative feelings of the people are so real. So we still have to dive deeper into the undetectable features behind the scenes. <clears throat> Auntie Daddy case sounds very serious, and it's awful lot like the Taiwan's most ridiculous one, Taijiman Fox case. Once again, the government is the biggest source of problems. I was about to say that too. Tiny move force case is really the sum of our state's level. It just is. Since the turn of the century, let's take a quick review. December 19, 2021, marked the 25th anniversary of the onset of the Taijiman case in Taiwan. Over 10,000 people from 14 countries participated in a protest that was organized by the Tax and Legal Reform League, Taiwan Association for Financial Criminal Law Study, and about a dozen other organizations in front of the Presidential Office Building in Taipei. For 25 years, Taijiman has been calling upon the Taiwan government to resolve its case, return their sacred land, and clear the names of Taijiman Shifu and Dizi. The Taijiman case is a landmark case where human rights and religious freedoms of Taijiman Shifu and Dizi have been seriously violated, and it is the violation of um, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and um, it's also the violation of two international covenants. The date plays an important role in Taijiman's history because 25 years ago, on December 19, 1996, Taiwan's former prosecutor ordered a raid on all academies of Taijiman and some private residences. Taijiman was accused of fraud and tax evasion by the prosecutor, but after a lengthy legal battle, Taiwan's Supreme Court ruled that the organization was not guilty of tax evasion or any other charges in 2007. The Action Alliance to Redress 1219 is an organization that is named after this date. This case is happened um, back to 1996, and at that time there's a religious crackdown that the land government tried to um, persecute um, the minority group or the uh, spiritual group that um, they think not support, uh, like not support the land government. Over the summer in 2021, Two reports on the Taijiman case were presented to the United Nations Human Rights Council by Terry Vallee, director of CAPLC. Taijiman and other speakers at the rally recounted their experiences of receiving tax bills that they claim were wrongfully issued by Taiwan's government. Damon Tsai explains that a system of bonuses received by taxation bureaucrats perpetuates the issuance of these tax bills. Organizers spoke about the challenges of appealing Taiwan's tax system. Tai 法律和行政的救濟 The event and the case have inspired a new generation of activists, some of whom were not yet born or were children when the Taijiman case began. So I'm also the Taijiman Dizi, and this case happened when I was seven years old. And now I'm 32, so it's like very, very long, 25 years. And I think the reason why so many young people um, come up and speak up is because we know that 
this is the countries uh, like we live and we love and we want this country to be better and now if we don't speak up then no one will help us and it's time for us to speak up for ourselves Taijiman's representative Pang Zhu Gang issued a statement that emphasizes the organization's mission of peace. At the event, Tim Gao, an AWC Human Rights Observer, read a letter that was sent to President Tsai Ing-wen that was co-signed by 25 international human rights experts and scholars about the Taijiman case. Taijiman是过去时代的产物，当时台湾的宗教信仰自由仍未获得充分的尊重。然而，对太极案的迫害行动，让人怀疑过去威权时代的问题是否已经完全解决了。2021 culminates a year of Taijiman fighting for justice throughout the world, both in person and online, as well as a total of 25 years of trying to resolve its case with the Taiwan government. Taijiman will continue its fight in the new year until the case is resolved. According to this full scenario, I really can't tell any difference between the totalitarianism of Taiwan in the past and its so-called democracy now. Isn't it more appropriate to name it the Taiwan government dynasty? And is there no law that is both dependable and effective to follow? Taiwanese democracy is still a poison with a sugar coating. The biggest threat is government officials taking the lead in disobeying the law, as long as officials are rewarded with bonuses. The law cannot be fully binding on those who enforce it, nor can the government make credible promises to the people. Mommy, didn't you along with the rest of Taiwanese vote? Why is the elected government so inept? Babe, if you own a business that hires people and then leaves them alone, their job objectives and outcomes may not be on the track you expect. An, aud an audit team will be required to oversee them. Likewise, just because we choose a ruler does not mean we can trust everything. We still have to learn to question and monitor those decisions. Let me tell you a story. In 2005, in a small town in Turkey, there was a shocking incident of 1,500 sheep jumping off a cliff collectively. The sheep lack the ability to judge, so when they see the sheep in front of them jumping towards the cliff, they join them. This is a blind obedience phenomenon that frequently occurs in animal behavior, and people are no exception. Most Taiwanese have long failed to understand that life cannot be isolated from politics and have become too mindlessly accepting government decisions rather than exploring and <coughs> making comprehensive judgments and failing to recognize if a danger exists. Look by peeling back the onion, Taiwan still has a flawed democracy. Despite free and fair elections that respect the most fundamental freedoms, there is still a, a lack of governance, political culture, knowledge and literacy, and depth of civic involvement. In cases such as the Taijiman Force case, both the people and the government must be aligned in their will to address it. As Archbishop Desmond Tutu 
a South Africa supporter of transformative justice, has stated, "You are overwhelmed by the extent of evil, but it's necessary to open the wound and cleanse it." Facing and accommodating different voices is the only way to achieve justice, to become a highly competitive and mature democracy, and to strengthen the conditions for a livable environment. Mommy, did Auntie Maggie tell you more amazing stories about Sweden? I would love to know. Sweden has a political culture that makes the country stand out in terms of political transparency and integrity, incorporating separation of powers and accountability procedures among government departments, freedom of the press, citizen organizations, and legal safeguards for whistleblowers. What surprised me the most. It's how easy it is to get the financial details of each public servant in Sweden for inspection. An even more admirable public servant quality is that the Swedish parties are united in their views about pay, believing that if politicians are paid excessively well, the public will lose faith in them. They value people's trust more than real money. There are probably very few politicians in Taiwan that think this way and would be treated like deviants. Incredibly high standard. I guess Auntie Maggie will never want to move back to Taiwan again. In my opinion, the safety net that can be created by an honest society, made up of both its government and its people, is invaluable. So if we ever plan to immigrate, we will make it a top priority. It turns out that the role played by justice in life is far more important than imagined. Just like in school, without classroom rules and practice, there would be a lot of disputes among classmates. In the same way, without a good system and justice. Citizens will lack a sense of security and belonging in their nation. Will our hard-earned asset and way of life be destroyed overnight by such a capricious system? It is extremely hard to forecast in today's Taiwan government culture. The pursuit of social justice is a never-ending journey. We hope to see an increase in the awareness that will add value to Taiwan's overall living conditions. The nature of unstructured and hollow governance will only make our progress falter and turn into a high-risk element in living conditions, hurting our present, future, and our beloved next generation. If you're worried. If you love this land, start paying more attention and taking more action every day to shape the habitat conditions you want to live in. Hope you enjoy our sharing. We'll see, see you, you next, next time. time. Catch up later. Until next time. Catch up later.